This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. On Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, you get information about foods you should eat to stay in good health and tips on how to stay active. I'm Josie Bidwell, host of Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, an associate professor of preventive medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Listen to the show every Monday at 11 or subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy with your preferred podcasting app. Good morning and thanks for listening to Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. Well, often life's simplest questions are the ones with the most complicated answers. And today we're going to talk about your dreams and ask you about your dreams. We have a dream expert here with us today, Karen Bonner. You know, on Southern Remedy and Relatively Speaking, um, you've heard much about sleep over the years. Time and time again, we've talked about how important adequate sleep is, um, and it's just critical to your daily functioning and your long-term health. Studies have, have shown that shortened sleep times are linked to heart disease, obesity, um, trouble thinking, trouble at work, worsened mood, and, and it can even shorten your life. There's also new research that certain types of sleep can be destructive to your overall health. And, and I want to talk a bit about dream sleep and how important that is. I think many of you have already heard about REM sleep. That is rapid eye movement sleep and um, think that dreams occur only during that REM sleep. Well, the truth is, is that you can have dreams during two different stages of sleep, REM and non-REM. And so many times it depends on the depth of sleep. During REM sleep, um, that rapid eye movement sleep, you are really not able to move. And that's sort of a protective thing. Um, because of sometimes the vivid dreams and the like. But REM sleep typically occurs about every 90 minutes and most adults sleep. And it usually makes up about a quarter of your time of sleep. So just some some general stuff to think about. Actually, sleep time, sleep stages change as we age. And total sleep time often decreases by a little bit, by about 10 minutes every decade. So it shouldn't diminish a lot. That's 10 minutes every 10 years, okay? Um, It's still important as you get older to get good sleep. Too much or too little is, is not good for your health. But the important part is to having adequate stages of sleep. Um, studies have shown that older adults are, um, who are healthy may not perceive that they're having sleep trouble when they really are. Um, they may have something like obstructive sleep apnea that is impairing sleep. They may have some other hormonal changes that are impairing sleep. And so whenever there are sleep problems, it's really, really important to seek help. And, you know, I I think as we move through this show, we can talk more about some of the terribly negative aspects of of poor sleep, but to just basically know that it's it's not just resting, but it's imprinting memories, it's regenerating the brain, it's allowing you to step through um, what you need to have that adequate mood and hormonal um, balance that we all need during sleep, okay? 
there's some really interesting studies that I want to step through as we're going through about sleep in general and and what we know now better about sleep as we age. Um, we also know quite a bit about why young children have nightmares, night terrors, and, and sleep issues. And there's a lot of interesting information out there about why we dream the way we dream. So um, I am just delighted today to have Karen Bonner, licensed professional counselor and dream expert, back in the show with us today. Karen, it's been all, over a year. I've missed having you. Well, I am delighted to be here. Thank you so much, Dr. Buttress, for inviting me back. And I'm really enjoying this beautiful new studio you have. Oh, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> lovely. It it makes everything nice. And we're doing a little bit of changing around of things in general. So looking forward to that. Change is always good, right? <laughs> so, you know, Karen, what I what I really would like us to do today, and, and we can open up the phones now, too, for our listeners to, to call as you have questions and ask about maybe a particular dream. You know, we've talked in the past about reoccurring dreams and, and what they could mean or could maybe not mean um, and, and how sometimes those dreams can be very disturbing and people don't want to continue to dream them even if they they continue to have those negative dreams and and you know the bottom line is as we said in the very first part of the show is that you really can't change the the your dreams you can you can make them say something differently and i want us to talk about that uh karen i know that sounds a little hocus pocusy um for want of a better term but but it's really true right well <clears throat> with recurring dreams um one way to uh, approach those is this uh, r go ahead and write them down write down that recurring dream see what those uh, recurring themes are in the dream and you know, our dreams speak to us uh, in a symbolic way, in a metaphorical way. But the purpose of our dreams is to work out some sort of um, psychological experience, to process what we have experienced, to process the emotions around it or what we've learned. And so uh, if there's a recurring dream that seems to be kind of disturbing, think about or or take notice of what the primary emotion is within the dream and then think about where is that showing up in life? Where is that showing up in waking life? Uh, I, one of the purposes of our dreams is to process emotions that we've experienced. So if, if there is some sort of anxiety in the dream, where are you anxious in waking life? And think about that a little bit. Um, you know, on the other side, if we want to get away from analytical approaches, uh, if you have an artistic bent, you can draw uh, or make a representation of the uh, element that's in the dream that keeps recurring or some part of the dream. And then just watch your dreams to see what happens next. Hmm. It's a it's a little bit of a different approach, but it's often very effective. So um, before we get to our first caller, we have Lauren from Memphis. I, I want to ask a, a, a quick question. So you mentioned um, if if your dreams, if there's anxiety in your life, perhaps there might be. Uh, a change. Are there typical dreams that point to anxiety? It really is. Um, uh, it, it really depends on the dreamer. You know, yeah. uh, our dreams are, are really made up of our own psychic content. So it do, does depend on the dreamer. There are a few themes that seem to pop up that, that we might want to say are so-called anxiety dreams um, that uh, 
very common dream that people have of being late, being late for school, can't find a classroom, being tested. Now, this is when people are long past school age, and yet you go back to school um, in dreams. Or you, you can't find your car, for instance, in a parking lot, or you've lost something. All of these kind of point to, at least on one level, some kind of anxiety. Right. Well, I think that, uh, you know, uh, many of us have had the reoccurring dream where you can't fear, find where your test is. Mm-hmm. You've never been to that classroom and you have to go. Or you're swinging on a swing and you suddenly go way up in the swing and you fall. Or you're hanging from a cliff or something like that. So, yeah, I... it. It seems that many of those are those anxiety-provoking dreams um, that you wake up and you're relieved that you woke up and it's it's not real. And so I want us to talk a little bit about um, how maybe we can readjust those dreams. I also have had a reoccurring dream that's really wonky, and I want you to to hear about that and see if if maybe you have some thoughts about that. So you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. Um, Lauren, you dropped off. Call back in if you want to give a call about that dream or any of you other listeners. Jump into the conversation. This is Relatively Speaking. We're talking about sleep and dreams. And what do dreams mean when you have disturbing dreams? disturbing dreams what can you what can you do about that how can you make them go away knowing that dreams are important and um, they're part of your normal sleep and we have Karen Bonner with us today to talk to us about um, when when perhaps maybe you need to try to take charge of making those dreams work a little bit better for you Karen, as we as we step through um, sleep and dreams, as as I've said, um, dream sleep is really important, right? Oh, it's essential. It, if we are deprived for, from dream uh, sleep, uh, the symptoms that will will show up very shortly, like right. within a few days, mood will plummet, memory will plummet. I mean. Yes, dream sleep is absolutely essential. Which which is um, a, a big part of that dream sleep is REM sleep. So you've got to get into that really deep sleep. You've got to get all the way through the stages of sleep. And like I said, it recycles about every 90 minutes. Um, and so to to make sure you've got to have concentrated sleep to get to REM sleep. You can't take short naps and expect that you're ever going to be able to get, get to what you need. Um, so I, I want us to remember that. And um, our first caller, uh, Lauren from Memphis, um, just left a message and she wanted us to step through talking about sleep aids and we'll get to that because that's a very important topic Lauren so thanks for calling in with that but let's go first to Andrew since he's on the line in Gulfport he's got some dreams that he wants to talk about hi Andrew thanks for calling hello I just I have a question and I'll I'll hang up when I get done and and listen to the answer Okay. Uh, what about reoccurring dreams of a, a not a not uh, unfaithful spouse? Uh, that that before you go, Andrew, let me ask you one more question. <laughs> so, re- reoccurring dream of an unfaithful spouse that has truly happened, and you can't get the dreams to go away, or is it something right. that wasn't real? I don't think it was real. I'm not sure. Okay. I, I mean, I, don't, I trust her. I believe that, she, you know, we haven't talked about I don't believe that she has. Uh, but, I mean, I keep having the same dreams over and over again mm. in different scenarios. Okay. So there's 
two ways to think about these types of dreams. First of all, the fact that it's recurring means that whatever is going on is not resolved. So, again, our dreams can speak to us on a symbolic level. And so, instead of taking it literally, let's start with taking it symbolically. And you can ask yourself, what part of myself, what part of me is betraying me? How am I betraying myself? That's, that's the first thing. Now, that's, that's a tough question. That, that requires some real um, self-examination. But often these dreams of an unfaithful partner are pointing to self-sabotage, self-betrayal. Um, there is, a, uh, and I will say, of course, on a different level, it may be that you're processing the feeling of being undermined by, by your partner, not necessarily infidelity in, in its, you know, in, in the form that, in a sexual form, but an, an infidelity in a different way, uh, um, some, some kind of feeling, whether it's right or not, some sort of feeling of being undermined or does that, does that make sense? It's sure. Yeah. Sure. So, so you can think sure. about that in both ways. Um, and they're not mutually exclusive. They can be, they can be both true at the same time. So, but yeah, that's some, that's deep, uh, work that's being called upon. But, you know, if your dreams keep pulling it up, you got to pay attention, right? And, and so, Karen, right. I, I'm right. going to ask for Andrew, what would you expect um, that he should do? Because, Andrew, I'm sure that's a very bothersome dream. Mm -hmm. And I could, I could see that perhaps if it's not on the reality basis of a, a true affair, mm -hmm. um, it might be that you're not feeling the the tight friendship that you had at some point with with your significant other or whatever but but how You're exactly right is yeah. is that yeah there it is yeah yeah and and i could i could see how that would be as disturbing mm -hmm. maybe not as but near dis as disturbing as a, an affair that you just feel like that friendship mm -hmm. is pulling away so what would you suggest there well I, first of all Again, ask, the first step is, what part of me is doing this? Where, where am I in this? Where have I contributed to this um, feeling of not being uh, as close as I once was? And if I can identify, if I'm brave enough to identify my own part in it, great. And then the next step is, got to have a talk, a, a real uh, deep and serious talk with your partner to see what maybe you can you can do about it to pull yourself closer again. I agree. I agree. I, do, I tell you what, I really appreciate uh, your time on this matter. And uh, I'll do my best to address it the best way possible. We wish you the very best. Yes, Andrew. Good luck. I hope, I hope that um, you're you're able to approach it and talk. I mean, you know, I think one of the things that I always recommend, and and I'm sure Karen will back this up, is is choose a time when you feel like you you're emotionally stable and able to do this, and when when you when you know that that your partner is also, um, and then sit down. Make sure that the surroundings are calm and, and good for you. And the very best thing I always feel when you're having a serious discussion is reach out and take, take the hand of that individual. Touch the person so that, that there is that connection there. And I always find that it makes things a lot easier um, if if you feel like you are not just trying to connect emotionally, but th that you're physically touching and connected there. So give that a whirl and see if that helps. I certainly will. Thank you for your time. Okay. Good luck. You know, um, 
as as we're going through, I think this might be a good time to maybe talk about our first caller's question, and that is sleep aids. Um, and as I was looking into just sleep um, over the years, because I, I look at that a lot, um, it's it's big into what I do because so many times emotional and behavioral problems are rooted in lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, uh, as I was looking into this, it it appears that somewhere around 20 percent of our population um, take sleep aids regularly. But even more, over 50 percent of individuals have taken over the counter sleep aids at one time or another to try to help control whatever um, sleep issues they're having. And and often there's the misconception that over-the-counter sleep aids are, are just fine because they're over-the-counter. And I think we forget that uh, just because something is over-the-counter like the antihistamines, um, um, many of the, the sleep aids that are over-the-counter have uh, Benadryl, diphenhydramine in them. And um, it's a great antihistamine. Don't get me wrong. I I use it. I think it's great. But to use it recurrently for sleep, Karen, you and I were talking about, can can be bad, right? Absolutely. It 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 can be used very very short term once mm-hmm. in a while. Uh, antihistamines have a uh, an effect on us of settling us down a little bit for many people they it makes them very sleepy Mm -hmm. for other folks it just sort of get kind of mellows them out a little bit so they can they can fall asleep but it does it can interfere with the sleep architecture or those uh stages of sleep that we go through those four stages of sleep then REM four stages of sleep then REM that goes along all uh, all through the night, those medications, many medications, uh, and if that if one of those medications is taken after uh, an alcoholic drink earlier in the evening, then that is a real recipe for disrupted sleep. Right, right. That can and so so many other things the same. So just to keep in mind anything that you take over the counter, sleep experts say. Make it short term. Use it not as an ongoing, but but perhaps to try to break a negative cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, but to do all those other things that mm-hmm. can help, like diminish alcohol, mm-hmm. diminish caffeine, right? Lifestyle mm-hmm. lifestyle changes really should be addressed first. First, and and that ranges from uh, paying attention to when you eat your last meal of the day. Pay close attention to alcohol intake because alcohol will disrupt sleep. Make sure that's if you if you have a glass of wine or a cocktail, make it early, early. Um, make sure the room is dark, it's quiet. Use a white noise machine if needed. Um, make sure the uh, double check your mattress, your pillows. Change your bed linen if you need to. Wear a all sleep of, mask. All yeah, there's so many things. Uh-huh, and so we'll, many things. We'll come back and mm-hmm. review all that because all of that is so so very important. It helps the your sleep architecture, and um, I think it can calm some of those negative sleep dream issues. All right, we're going to go back to the phone. We have Sam from Vicksburg who has some comments on the previous caller. Hi, Sam. How are you? Good. I want to hear your comments. What are your thoughts? This about uh, the last caller, Andrew. Uh, recording dreams shows active relationship, but if they are so negative, they are showing emotional deficit, and generally, they are sign of weakness in the relationship. Hmm. That's interesting, um, Sam. And and I, I think that that is where um, I was sort of hearing our previous caller's voice go when it was suggested that perhaps there was a, 
a, a relationship, perhaps even a friendship, um, that they're not feeling as tied. So I think um, your interpretation is is kind of where we were going, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, thanks for that, Sam. Um, any other thoughts? I'm not ready. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully um, Andrew will work in that relationship and that his partner will be able to to do that with him. That that would be that would be the way to go. So thanks for your call, Sam. Okay. Um, next in line, we have Gail in Crystal Springs with some reoccurring dreams. Um, hi, Gail. Hi. I've got a friend that has horrible fighting reoccurring dreams with just random people where he wakes up hitting the floor or the pillows. And the other is that he's been retired 20 years. He's been hadn't had a drink in over two years, but the workplace situation is always just, it's always something horrible coming from his old, old, old workplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not where he retired from, actually. And um, I just wonder what we can get him to do to process those dreams better. Oh, man, what a great question. So when we find ourselves in conflict in a dream, we are fighting uh, another individual. Uh, We are fighting in a war. People sometimes dream that they're in the middle of a war. When we are in conflict in our dream, again, the first question we ask ourselves is, where am I conflicted in my life? Where, Where am I fighting myself? And then... Pay attention if if the people that show up in the dream that that your friend is fighting, if he can name them, if if he knows them, he knows who they are. One quick way to address this is to think as just right off the top of his head, three characteristics of that person. Say he's fighting with Joe. Say three things about Joe. Well, Joe is this, Joe is this, Joe is this. And then you ask yourself, and this is a hard question, what part of me is that? And how is it contributing to my own inner conflict? So, if okay. he, right? So if he's dreaming right. of a named person, you know, an identifiable person, that person is simply reflecting back to your friend attributes of your friend that are contributing to this conflict, this feeling of conflict. Now, let me say something real quick about the old workplace. You know, if there were unresolved issues at the old workplace or a traumatic situation Mm -hmm. around the old workplace, that sometimes appears in dreams, even though it's years later, because now is the time after, you know, possibly years of experience or understanding ourselves but now is the time to readdress that possible trauma or, or unresolved issue that went around with that workplace. What's interesting about dreaming about the workplace, though, is, again, if you think about the wordplay that sometimes comes up in dreams is, how do I need to, what is my work now? What is my work now? I know he's retired, but does, do I need to work on myself or do I need to work on some relationships? Or do I need to work on my spiritual life? Where, what is my, where am I called to work now? And it, it, right? And the old workplace may give a clue to that. How's that, that sound? sound? That yeah. sounds awesome. So I, I do think that, that as we're moving along in this, um, I, I wonder, you know, I was thinking along the lines that post-traumatic stress disorder, I know that is so overused, um, but it it almost sounded like there was something that could have happened in the past that is not not resolved right. at all. And, and do you think that could be playing a part? Is that what you were saying? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, it, at least rule it out. Mm-hmm at least rule that out if if 
if that's not what it is, then then we can delve further into what type of work was it? Why dreaming about that workplace? How is it serving today going into the future? In other words, our dreams won't drag us back to the past for no reason. It is in service to the present and our development moving forward. Mm. And so if it's if there's not an identifiable, unresolved situation there, then it's something else. And we just keep looking at it. We just keep looking at it. Yeah, yeah. We're talking with our dream expert, Karen Bonner. Here, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. We're talking about dreams and sleep and fixing the architecture. If it feels like it's broken, if you're waking up tired, feeling angry or emotionally stressed, then then you need to do something. And we are going to jump right back to the phones. We have Lisa in Boonville about a reoccurring dream. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm good. So reoccurring dreams sometimes are disturbing. Tell us about yours. Well, when I was 18, I didn't marry the man that I loved because my family didn't approve of me because we was a mixed relationship. Mm. So I ended up marrying another man that my family would approve of, which ended up in divorce 10 years later. Mm. I have dreamed about this first man, and when I wake up from the dreams, I feel refreshed. I feel loved, and I don't I don't know how to make these dreams go away. Wow. Okay. So, uh, just like I mentioned to the previous caller, let me ask you something, if if you don't mind. Tell me the, tell me the things that made you fall in love with that first man. What were what were those attributes? What were his characteristics? What was his personality like? He was gentle. He was kind. He was loving, and he truly loved me. All right. Now here's a tough question for you. Do you love yourself? I'm learning to. That's what these dreams are all about. They are signaling to you to love yourself the way you felt that man loved you, to be gentle with yourself, to be kind to yourself. That's what they're coming okay. for. Wow. Well. And, and you know, why would you make them go away? They sound lovely. <laughs> <laughs> because he just recently got divorced, and I've been separated or divorced for 20 years. And I was just having this big hope that maybe we could reunite. Well, l- l- let me reiterate that what's being called for, though, is for you to do this for yourself. Love yourself first. And then, okay. you, right? A- and then your relationships all around will be deeper, richer, and better. Okay. Okay. Right. right. I'll do that. Right. And, and um, one thing that um, actually I'm giving Jay White credit for this. Say it, Jay, because I think you're right. Well, I was just going to say it, your point is to a larger extent is that she doesn't need to make him the answer to her happiness. Correct. She needs to get there first and then he can be like the the icing on the cake as the kids say. <laughs> right. Yeah. So But don't rely just solely on him to be like the superman that breaks out of the phone booth. Right. I guess. Yeah. I like that, Jay. And I, I think and that's I think that's exactly where Karen was going mm-hmm. is that that you have to be comfortable, happy and love yourself. And then, then that other love will come. So, um, and maybe it will, and maybe it won't with him. And that's okay, as long as, as you are feeling special and, and deserving of love, right? Thank you. Okay. Thanks for calling. Work on that. Okay, we're going to go stay on the phones. Bruce, on the road, about not dreaming very much until recently. Right, Bruce? Oh, yeah. So I, so I spent my whole life dreaming a little bit, you know, when I, I mean, especially during my working years. And, uh, and you know, maybe 
six months after I retired, and ever since I've been retired for you know, 12 years or something. And uh, man, I dream all the time. And and do you think that it is because you're doing something differently? I have no idea. Uh, I think, well, here's my opinion is that it's almost like I didn't have time for dreams before. Hmm. That, that's exactly what I was thinking, Bruce. I was thinking that the, the pressure of work, of career, of a schedule, um, sometimes curtails that last uh, that last sleep cycle that is often the ones that bring the dreams. And now that you're free of that, so to speak, um, you know, the dreaming can 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 happen. I mean, is there any pattern to them that you can discern or anything like that? Um, no, but so sometimes I have these dreams and there's nothing really specific going on is it's just confusing and but i do get um a lot of people in my dreams who have no relationship to each other that i've been with the past i get guys that i was in the military with i get guys that mm-hmm. i mean just people from all parts of my life are in places where i've been where you know unique places i don't even know you know so mm-hmm. they're they're all, all there you know friends mostly they're friends do you mind me asking how old are you, Bruce? Seventy. Okay. So you know, one thing that I did want to bring out is that many times, um, as we get older, our dream dreams decrease the amount of dream time. So actually, that's good that that you have increased dreams because it one to me mm-hmm. means good quality sleep. Um, you're getting into that REM sleep that a lot of people as they get older don't because of many other issues, but, um, and maybe you've had some good lifestyle changes that have helped. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I I was going to ask you quickly about a, an old recurring dream that still happens once in a while, but if I had dreamt at all, it was like one of these dreams where I'm in a car or on a bicycle or something, I'm maybe going up a big hill and the hill just gets steeper and steeper and steeper and I and I get to the top and I there's no hill left and I fall and I just fall. Mm. And when I was young the falling would scare me, but now now and I'm almost kind of semi conscious in these dreams because in my dream I've had these dreams so many times that I tell myself in the dream that I know it's gonna be all right because I've never landed I've never hurt gotten hurt i just land softly every time every time so i'm i know what's going to happen okay excellent i love the fact that you kind of get got lucid in that dream that you were able to talk yeah. yourself through the dream and sometimes this can point to um kind of energy levels like a lot of energy and then the energy tapers off it can point to mood Mood is elevated, you know, you've got, mood is very elevated, and then you have a, a, a dip in mood. Um, it it can, those kinds of dreams can point to a lot of things that are represented by the steep hill yeah. and the and the fall off. But, um, yeah, your earlier dreams about all of your friends, you know, at 70, we're in the last quarter of life. Some of those dreams can be, like, calling you into the summation as the summation stage of life what what have you learned who have you known all all, all yeah. of those things right yeah yeah well so i think about that a lot yeah 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 well thanks so much for your call that's uh that's Thank a you. lot thanks for calling okay we ha- are going to james on the road he is so patiently been waiting and you've been dreaming about deceased relatives james uh yes ma'am i just wanted some insight on the uh, i'm always in the company of dead relatives been dead like 20 25 years and i'm always talking to dead relatives so just give me some insight on it i i, I will be happy to james um often you know the relatives that we grew up with, the people that we loved, um, 
that we grew up with, we got something from all of them. You know, I, I got things from my grandmother and my grandfather, and 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 we in, incorporate those things into ourselves, right? And sometimes in our current life, we need to remember something that was given to us by those folks that are now long past. So when you are talking with a dead relative in a dream, you can, you can ask yourself, what did I get from this person, you know, when I was growing up or when I knew them or before they died? What, what qualities do I need to remember about them that I can now put into practice in my current situation? In other words, whatever they gave you, whatever um, wisdom they gave you, whatever uh, model they provided for you, n you're being called to remember that so you can put it in service to your life now. Does that help? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so very much. Okay, great. Yeah, good things. Yeah. I I hear that often from many that mm -hmm. they dream about relatives who have left them and that's that memory imprinting the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to our next caller. I believe that's Jay in Lower Mobile. Um Jay. Hi. Hi. Um I I have kind of the opposite problem of the well, not problem. I'm just wondering what to do. Uh, about what's happening. Um, it's unusual circumstances. Uh, synoptically, um, uh, dreams involving being invaded by squatters that <laughs> regrettably have come true in not only one but two different places, um, the only two places that I have, have lived um, in the last few decades. And... Um, I understandably am now having a little difficulty trying to sleep at all. Although um, it, it's the last couple of callers have given me inspiration because I do still dream some. I look at my dream. I, I keep a dream journal and have for a long time. Great. And uh, and uh, uh, but it's it, it's the new generation. It's the it's the the third generation of my relatives that I would dream about previously, like my grandmother. Hmm. You understand? Am I, am I, am, I'm not explaining it very well because I'm pretty anxious about it. <laughs> okay. um, uh, and which is probably why I can't sleep. And I just want to be able to sleep enough to, am I sleeping enough? I mean, I don't even know. I, sometimes I feel so fogged over. Well, it sounds like you might not be sleeping enough. So um, there are some, some things we were talking about at the very beginning of the show. Make sure you're, you're not having caffeine in after noon um, in the day, that you're getting exercise, that you're getting some sunlight, that, that at night the room is dark and quiet, and um, that you're staying away from alcohol before bedtime and that you eat early in the day. But all of those things can help. And then, um, you know, the suggestions that that Karen was sending out about, you know, trying to take charge and, and kind of write down what was good, the bad, and the ugly about it and try to move on. But... I don't know. I hope that helped. But it, it sounds like you're probably not getting at least the right quality of sleep. All right. Let's go to our final caller so we can get to that person who's having a reoccurring dream. I want to make sure we get to Kay in Poplarville. Hi, Kay. Hello. I, my reoccurring dream is I am lost. It might be on a train and I get off of a station, and then I'm doing something, and I can't get back and find the train to go home. Um, it's all about I can't return. I can't get back. Okay. Any suggestions? <laughs> and, and is it always a train? <laughs> nope. Sometimes oh. I'm on a boat. Oh, Sometimes okay. Sometimes I'm over the water, you know, and then I dock in some place, and I'm looking around, and I'm trying to get back, and I can't find how to get back. Or I go to somebody's house. 
and I'm inside and it's unfamiliar to me and then I'm trying to get out and go home and I can't find my way out. Okay. Okay. So let me let me ask this question. Are you um are you working? Are you a career person? I'm actually working part time. I'm seventy one. And I teach fitness classes. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, I recently worked at a college here in town and was let go after 22 years with no explanation. Ah. And so in order to continue to teach my classes, I went out on my own and, you know, and and, and now doing that by not working for them. And mm-hmm. So in a larger, broad sense, the the feeling of being lost, um, you know, you, again, you ask yourself, where where am I lost in, in in my in my waking life? And I I don't know why, but I I felt like there was a a career or a a, a work issue happening, uh-huh. um, and you said you got let go without yeah. explanation. Okay. I'm just throwing this out. I'm guessing that that lost feeling goes along with that, you know? Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and the, the, yeah, it does. Yeah. And the modes of transportation have to do with your drive. Uh, where are you going to put your energy now? What direction are you going to go in? Where, what's, where are you going? You know, the thing about the house though, is a little different to get lo- the house is often a stand in for the psyche itself. And so you roaming around an unfamiliar house um, is you're kind of being asked to do some inner work, to to really mm-hmm. go inside and see who you are, where you are. You said you're age 71. Like our previous caller, um, you know, last quarter of life, how are you going right. to spend it? Right. How's it? How yeah. are you going to spend your life? This is a great question to ask, and I think your dream is asking okay. you to, to look at that. Well. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, of course. thank you. Thank you so much for your call. We appreciate it. Um, Karen, in, in just the last minute, if you will, just quickly talk to us about lucid dreams, mm-hmm. because you mentioned that term, and I want to make sure everybody knows what you mean by that. Yes, our previous caller indicated that when he uh, had this recurring dream where he got to the top of a hill and sort of fell off Mm -hmm. that he was able to remind himself within the dream that he was dreaming and that it would end okay. So that awareness of dreaming while you're dreaming is called lucid dreaming. So you're not awake, um, you're still dreaming, but you have a sort of meta- cognition, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, or an awareness that you are are dreaming. And you can have some effect on the direction of the dream. However, the unconscious always answers. Well, this has been just such, such great information and great fun. And thanks to all of you callers who called in to share your dreams and to you listeners for listening and staying with us but thank you mostly Karen Bonner again for being with us and if you'd like to hear this show in any past episode you can listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast app by searching Relatively Speaking Relatively Speaking is a production of MPB Think Radio engineered and produced by Jay White on MPB Think Radio This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone.